So in this video, we're going to go from this to this. And the example I'm using, we have three different entities. We have a creator, we have a video and a category. Now the creator can upload one to many videos. So it's one to many relationships. And the video uh, also has a category. And this category can be used in multiple videos, of course, which is a one to n uh, relationship as well the end being on the video and as you know the foreign key in SQL in uh, relational databases has the foreign key which is why our video entity has a creator ID as a foreign key to the creator table and the category ID as a foreign key to the category table now in this project we are using entity framework core uh, I'm personally using the database first approach but you could have used the code first approach. It's not that different. I'm going to show you how to apply uh, whatever we're going to do in this video to both cases. So basically, we have the three models of the three entities that we talked about, the creator, video, and category. And since I'm using the database first approach and I've used the scaffold method, also it's uh, in a video, it's going to be linked down below. Uh, we have the navigation properties here. Now in code first approach, you probably have them uh, you manually added them without the virtual keyword probably and it's not it's not that different I'm gonna tell you in this video when to use the virtual keyword and when not to use it we also have our DB context class here you probably have it either auto generated using the data source approach or you created it manually to create your migrations and so on now I have here one controller and uh, an API which is of type get uh, and I've created a new instance of the content creator DB context. Now, of course, in a real application, you wouldn't have everything in your controller. You would separate your project into different layers, controller, uh, business logic layer, data access layer, and so on. But here, just to keep it simple and straightforward, I'm gonna just do it this way. Now, what I'm doing is I'm using the DB context uh, class or instance of the class and accessing the creators entity and then I'm just trying to pick the first record in which we have the creator ID as one and in my table I've already added that so if we select we can see that we have John the creator John with an ID of one now if we make an API call first we need to run the application and then if we send a request Indeed, we did, we did receive the creator John. Now, if we take a look at our navigation property, we have an empty array. And this is in our model here, the videos. We did not receive the videos. Now, there are many ways on how you can actually get the full object with the references to different tables. In this video, I'm going to show you two ways, lazy loading and eager loading. So. The first way, which is lazy loading, we have two or three steps. Let's go to tools. We need to install a package first. Let's go to NuGet package manager and manage NuGet packages. I've already installed the package myself. It's called Microsoft Entity Framework Core.proxies. Of course, you need to go to browse and install that package. And you also need to take care of the version installed. It should match the version of your project or else it won't work. Now, after installing this package, you need to go to your DB context class and to your own configuring method. Now, of course, using the SQL server or whatever uh, method here. So before this, or even after it, it doesn't matter. You can now add use lazy loading proxies. Let's save that. And by the way, if you're not using uh, the configuration here, you're adding it in program.cs. You can also just simply add this or chain this method after use a SQL server or before that in your program.cs. Now for me, since it's a database first approach, I already have this auto-generated, so I add it here right away. The second step that you need is to make every navigation property as virtual. So here I have virtual videos and video we have virtual creator and virtual category. Of course, we are uh, referencing those two objects because there's a relationship between them and video 
for me it was auto generated for you you have to create them manually if your code first approach but don't forget the virtual keyword that's the second step now let's go ahead and run and see what happens if we send we are going to receive an error which says a possible object cycle was detected this can either be due to a cycle or if the object depth is larger than the maximum allowed depth of 32 and this is happening because when we are loading the creator object like we said previously when we have the virtual keyword and we have lazy loading enabled we are load the we are going to load the full object so here we are loading video and then video is referencing a creator and then creator has videos and then the video is referencing creator and it it's stuck in a cycle basically so to fix that we just have to go to program.cs and we just need to add this line of code basically what this does is it tells our program to ignore the cycles now if we run our application again and make a new request as you can see this time we have received uh, data and we've also received the videos not just the creator that we used to receive before this time the videos array isn't empty we have the uh, fields filled and you also have the category object with its required fields now there's something you should know with lazy loading that in lazy loading we're not only making one sql query we're, we're running multiple sql queries behind the scenes without us knowing and uh, anytime we try to access the navigation field so for example here when we are fetching the creator the creator has a navigation property to videos so whenever we try to access the videos navigation property it's gonna make a new sql query and then inside of video whenever we try to access the navigation property category or creator we're also going to be running uh, new sql queries so it's multiple sql queries in the background and not just one so this is of course as you know bad for performance also one more thing you should be aware of if you're using database first uh, as you know we also have a reference from category to videos but that's bad if you if you're using lazy loading uh, because let's say for example okay we have loaded our uh, creator which is john we received the videos perfect we received the category for each video perfect we have the full object loaded but inside of category we have videos as well because we have a navigation property here that was filled by lazy loading why is this bad well because first of all we already have the videos we don't really want the videos again inside of category uh, second of all, let's say this category, which is technology, was used in 1 million videos. Then we would receive here an array of, of course, 1 million. So that's not really what we want. What we can do is we can just remove this property here. Inside of category, I just remove videos because I don't really care about having it here. In code first approach, of course, you manually just don't add it. But if you're with database first approach and you have unnecessary uh, fields that you don't need, you can just simply remove them. If we send again, as you can see, this time we have the category, ID, name, description without having the reference to the videos, which is much better. So to go over the steps of lazy loading again, we had to install a package called microsoft.entityframercore.proxies. The second step is we had to add the use lazy, lazy loading proxies uh, method on in our options and the third step is of course the navigation properties need to be virtual because now for example if i remove the virtual keyword from creator from videos from the videos property and creator if you go ahead and make a new request as you can see we received property creator video is not virtual we need to have it as virtual if you are using uh, lazy loading we have also seen how we can ignore the cycles because it causes problems of course in some situations in specific uh, relationships you don't end up in cycles but in my case and in many other cases you're going to have cycles so you could just avoid them and fix the error by adding this line of code and i'm going to have it in the description now let's jump, jump into uh, eager loading 
But first, if this video is helpful for you and you're still watching, please leave a like and subscribe. It would really help me. I'm trying to reach 1000 subscribers. So let's go back here and remove this. Okay. And I'm just going to remove the virtual keyword just for anyone out there who's using the code first approach. And this time we actually don't really need the virtual keyword since we're not using lazy loading. I'm going to run the app again. And now we went back to scratch. So if we send a request, as you can see, this is what we are actually receiving. The videos array is empty. Now with eager loading, we make use of include and then include. So for example here, what we're saying is we are fetching from the creators table the first record in which we have the ID of the creator as one. What we can do is after selecting the table here, we can say include. I'm gonna do it this way. Dot include. And then we can say C or creator, it doesn't matter, you can call it whatever you want. Creator dot, and as you know, our creator object has the videos property. So here in include, we are saying that we want to include the videos property to our creator. So now if we run this again, restart the application and then hit send. As you can see, we actually don't have an empty array for videos now. We actually included the videos. And if you take a look at my table here, of course, if we select the rows, as you can see, we have two videos and those two videos are for creator ID one, which is John. Now, if you take a look at category here, the field is still null. We have not fetched the category as well. Although in our code, in our model, the video has a category as well. So what we can do is we can say dot then include. And now we are referencing the video. We can say V video or V or whatever, and then video dot category. So we are including the videos in creator, and then we are including the category and videos. Let's restart this and hit send. And as you can see, now our videos also have a category object, which is fully loaded from our database. We got the full object just like we want. Now, unlike lazy loading, eager loading only <coughs> runs one SQL query. So it makes use of joins behind the scenes. Here, this is going to be translated into only one SQL query in our database using joins, depending on how many includes and how many tables and relationships we have, of course. Unlike in lazy loading, in, where <coughs> in which we said we have multiple queries being uh, executed as soon as we uh, access or try to access a navigation property. By the way, here we can use multiple includes and multiple then include de depending on the structure of your tables and the relationships that you have in your application. Uh, in general, it's better to avoid using lazy loading because of its uh, performance issues. So I personally like to use eager loading now, in this video, we only talked about lazy loading and eager loading. However, out there, there are other different methods that you can use to fetch the full object, such as explicit loading and such as, for example, using dot select and so on in your link and in your queries. But this video was just about lazy loading and eager loading. If it helped you in any way, please leave a like. If you have any questions, ask me. And if you have any uh, video ideas for the future, please let me know down below. Also, watch my code first approach using Entity Framework and my database first approach. The links are going to be in the bio. Um, and see you next time. Thank you for watching.